Hello everyone, welcome to the Start from Car Wars channel. Today's video is about how the AC condenser works. This is going to be a continuation of other videos that I have done where I've been explaining the operation of the air conditioning system components. If you haven't seen them, you can always check them out. What I'm going to do, no different than before, I'm going to bring this camera up close so you can see this better. So let's get started. So now that we have the camera up close, let's go over the image that I drew. This is the AC condenser. It's mounted in the front of your vehicle, in front of the radiator. That's the most common location. And just like I wrote it here, the AC condenser is a heat exchanger, just like the evaporator. As you learned in a previous video, the evaporator transferred the heat from the vehicle to the refrigerant. And now the job of the AC condenser is to transfer the heat that has been captured by the refrigerant to the atmosphere. And, as its name implies, it's a condenser. So it's going to condense that gas and it's going to leave as high compressed liquid. So here's how this works. The upper line is going to be the high pressure inlet line. This line comes from the AC compressor and it's going to be carrying highly compressed gas. Remember when the refrigerant left the evaporator it left as a gas but it was a low pressure gas. The AC compressor applies pressure to this gas and it gets compressed. And when this happens it gets hotter hotter than the ambient temperature. So here you have highly compressed gas that is going to enter the AC condenser. And just like I mentioned, the refrigerant temperature is going to be a lot hotter than the temperature of the atmosphere or the ambient temperature per se. Let's remind how this works. The heat is always going to travel from a warmer object or a warmer element to a colder element. So if the temperature of the refrigerant was lower or the same as the ambient temperature there wouldn't be any heat exchange and your air conditioning wouldn't work because the temperature of the refrigerant coming in would be the same as the temperature of your car so that's not going to work so what needs to happen is when this gas, when this refrigerant is compressed and on average the temperature is going to be starting around 30 degrees Fahrenheit hotter than the ambient temperature, but I'll go over that in a couple minutes, how the pressure affects the temperatures. So we have a line that is carrying a refrigerant that is still in a very highly compressed gas stage that is going to be at least 130 degrees. So here we have a hotter than the ambient temperature line and there is going to be air that is passing through this AC condenser. It's going to be done in two different ways. When your vehicle is moving, obviously the air that your car is going to encounter as you travel is going to pass through and is going to pass through the radiator also. Now let's say you're at a stoplight and you're not moving your vehicle is going to be equipped either with an electric fan that is going to turn on when you turn your air conditioning on to facilitate that airflow. If your car does not have an electric fan it's going to have a mechanical fan that is going to be activated by what is called a fan clutch and usually is activated at low speeds so there's airflow going through all the time and that fan clutch that I just mentioned usually either disengages or spins the fan at very low speed when you're moving which it would be normally at higher engine RPMs but because that's not the subject that we're studying today and we don't want to get off track we're just going to remember that there needs to be airflow passing through in order for the heat that is contained in these lines to be transferred from the refrigerant to the atmosphere. So as this highly compressed gas is moving through the AC condenser, the heat's being exchanged and it's being passed to the atmosphere. So when this happens, it starts getting condensed and it changes form from a highly compressed gas to a highly compressed liquid. So by the time it leaves the AC condenser, back to its name, it already condensed that refrigerant. So it's leaving as a highly compressed liquid. And the temperature of the refrigerant, as a rule of thumb, is going to be around 10 degrees higher than the ambient temperature. So if we stay with our 100 degree weather example, then this line could be anywhere between 105 to 110 degrees on average. Okay, we'll go over that in a second. Once the refrigerant leaves the condenser, 
is going to travel towards the evaporator. Now here I made a note. If the vehicle has an expansion valve instead of an orifice tube, the high pressure refrigerant will pass through the receiver dryer first. So just like the note says, if your car has an expansion valve, this line right here is going to be connected to the dryer. The refrigerant will pass through the dryer and then it'll go to the evaporator. If your vehicle has an orifice tube, this line will be connected directly to the evaporator and when the refrigerant leaves the evaporator as a low pressure gas is going to go through an accumulator. Now we're going to go over this note that I made here. So I have this note right here, you can either follow along or read it on your own, it's up to you. The temperature of the refrigerant entering as a highly compressed gas and leaving the condenser as a highly compressed liquid refrigerant is directly related to ambient temperature and to the pressure that's being applied to the refrigerant as it is compressed by the AC compressor. So here are some average temperatures to make an example and remember these numbers can vary depending on the pressure that's being applied to the refrigerant and the condition of the system. So they're average. The gas refrigerant going in into the AC condenser is going to start around 30 degrees Fahrenheit higher than the ambient temperature just like we mentioned earlier. We mentioned that if we had like a hundred degree temperature then we could expect at least 130 degree temperature on the line. And if we move on to the liquid refrigerant going out of the condenser, temperature of the line is going to be around 10 degrees Fahrenheit higher than the ambient temperature. So if we have back to the 100 degree weather, then that line could be around 110 degrees. Just like I said, these are averages. And now I'm going to show you how these temperatures look like on a gauge set. So here's a manifold gauge set for R134A. We're going to focus on the high pressure side. When you change the pressures on the refrigerant, it's also going to affect the temperature. So there you go. Now you know how the AC condenser works. If you want to stay up to date on upcoming videos, make sure you subscribe to our channel. That way you know when a new video comes up. In the meantime, thanks for watching today's video, and we'll see you next time.